I'm ready to bring in this incredible woman, an incredible leader and visionary, Tana Marshall. She's an author. She's an intuitive. She's a spiritual teacher, a woman's empowerment coach, and the founder of Infinite Woman. She focuses on guiding business, busy women who are 50 years and over to connect with intuition, prioritize self-care, and reclaim their power. Through her program, Overcoming the Nice Girl Syndrome, Tana empowers women to set boundaries, practice forgiveness, and find joy. Drawing on her 20 years of Capitol Records career, she blends spiritual wisdom with corporate experience, assisting women in balancing their career and self-care. She's a certified holistic health care practitioner, a law of attraction coach, and a practitioner of EFT. She has over 35 years in spirituality, wellness, and energy techniques. She shares her journey of healing and transformation, empowering women to create lives they truly, truly love, to get in touch and have fun. So welcome, Tana. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. And let me say, you are a fantastic host. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I thank you. I I am um you know, I'm feeling the energy and today's energy is a little bit different than yesterday's. Um but it was funny because as I was trying to deal with all the stuff going on, my team said to me, "Oh my god, Amira, everybody can see the stress on your face. You know, you got to pull it together. <laughs> Focus." So thank you for that. It, it, it's it's I really am humbled with what goes on behind, you know, shows and stuff now. And, and I feel so humbled to be in your presence and to have all the incredible speakers that are with us. <clears throat> my, my uh, communication line is breaking down. <laughs> well, you have amazing people Thanks. here. Testament to you. And I'm yes. Really so, this. so tell us, tell us, Tana, how, my God, 20 years at Capitol Records, and now you're a holistic coach. How did that happen? Well, I'd already been always been interested in this stuff. I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 15. And when I was 18, I had a really bad relapse. They put me on a bunch of drugs that made me feel horrible. And I thought there's got to be a better way to be healthy and feel better. So I started studying health and wellness and natural remedies and holistic medicine when I was 18. And it evolved from there. But I didn't think about it as a career at that point. And I did end up going to work at Capitol Records when I was 21. And that was the most amazing experience of my life. We were like a yeah. family. We're still a family. I met most of my closest friends there. I met my husband there. And it was just, uh, just the best time of my life. And it's interesting, your topic that you're talking about, I feel like intuition kind of led me there, but I, I didn't always honor it in my life. But it wasn't until years later that uh, I had a boss that I absolutely loved and he left and I planned on following him. And then I realized, you know what, this is not where my passion lies. And that's when I decided to become a holistic health practitioner. I took a two year program and a month before I was graduating, I got laid off. <laughs> oh boy. I got the universal boo. So I thought, oh, yeah. this is perfect timing, perfect timing. Yeah, it was, it could have been worse. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And at the time I was uh, living with my mom, my dad had asked me to move in with her and take care of her when he died in 2003. This was 2008. And uh, it was not long after that, that she needed my care full time. So all of my professional goals had to be put on the back burner. But during that time, I kept following that path to create a foundation for what I, what I wanted to do. And then I became a law of attraction coach and an EFT practitioner and getting all these other certifications because I've been doing hands-on healing since I was about um, 20, 21. So I, I was doing all these things on the side while I was taking care of my mom and she passed in 2018. So I've been able to delve more into this since then, but I was doing uh, YouTube videos. I thought if I can't build my coaching practice, let me at least do something where I feel like I'm being of service, where I'm sharing what I know and being supportive and just putting something out there to help for now. So I started my YouTube channel in uh, 2013. So it's just been a lot of stuff over the, you know, however many years. Well, yeah. And trying to piece all the puzzle pieces together. I mean, I, I, I can relate to it completely. You know, I had a lot of different modalities and experiences 
But how did it whittle down to what you're doing now? Was well, there a moment? Was there something pivotal that happened? In yeah, my husband, he's like, you should just work with women. And I'm like, you should be <laughs> actually kind of works. And, you know, let me go way back to high school. I, I live in Los Angeles and in the seventies, they started busing. And so they were busing kids in from the not so great neighborhoods, which made sense, but they were going to start busing us to the not so great neighborhoods. Oh, that would be terrible. Yeah. And my dad was a retired policeman. He was like, oh no. So <laughs> I was put into private school and um, I was an ugly duckling. I was fat braces. That's hard to believe. I know everybody says that. And I always have a picture that I whip up. I'm like, here. So <laughs> <laughs> here's the ugly duckling picture. <laughs> um, so, you know, boys were mean to me and I, it, they made me feel insecure. And for high school, my parents put me in a Catholic girl's school. And oh my God, I was so happy. So I remember the first day of school, I only knew a couple of other people there, but I really didn't know anybody. But all I saw were, were girls and everybody was in a uniform. We were all dressed the same. So it was this kind of even playing field, but I had this sense of belonging and community. And I met my group so quickly. And even though there, I won't even call them clicks because there were just a, different groups of people around, but nobody, there weren't really mean, well, there were some mean girls, but I just had my group of friends so quickly and I just felt free to be myself. So being surrounded by all girls was such a great experience. And I was also in a Masonic organization for girls called Job's Daughters. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. I have, yeah. Okay, my family goes way back. My grandfather was in the Knights Templar, Masons, um, Shriners. I call him the Grand Poobah because he held the highest level office in all of those things over the years. He died way before I was born, but we had strong Masonic roots in my family. So I was heavily involved with Job's Daughters. I was honored queen twice. There's a uh, office that you have to vote to be elected and move up these offices to get to that and have your term. So I did that twice. So I had a lot of leadership skills with girls and young women from my teen years as well. So it, it just made sense that I focus on women because I have, my girlfriends are so important to me. I have men in, in my life who are important too, but I just have such a strong bond with women. And I've been one of those people who's been the unofficial therapist for friends for years. I mean, even at Capitol, people would come sit at, at my desk and talk to me and get coaching. I didn't even realize I was coaching, but sometimes it would be a line <laughs> outside my door. Like, you know, who's next? Like, oh, I'll get back to you in a second. So I was already doing all of this stuff, kind of like the hands-on healing. I'd already been doing it. Let me go get certified as a massage therapist and certified in these modalities. So mm -hmm. I can do a little more officially. So that's when the holistic health practitioner thing, I was doing coaching and I thought, let me go get a coaching certification and law of attraction seemed to make the most sense because I'd been studying Abraham Hicks for a long time. In fact, one of my bosses at Capitol, the one who hired me and my husband, his name is Tommy. He's the one who gave me an Abraham tape. I was frustrated with things. He's like, I'm going to send you a tape of Abraham. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but okay. And so I learned the 68 second process and I was in love with my husband. It's a long story, but we were friends. And then I fell in love with him and I'd been trying to make things happen for two years. And then after two months of just doing the 68 second process, we were together. So more details, just bringing me to where, where I am or where I was at that point. Beautiful, beautiful. Was there a decision that you ever made not following your intuition that you regretted? Yeah, it's interesting thinking about that question. It's not just one instance. There were a lot of times that I did not follow my gut, or I just didn't even think to follow my gut because I, it's one of the reasons I created this Overcoming Nice Girl Syndrome program, because there were people in my life growing up that made me feel like you are not important. You don't matter. Don't have an opinion. Don't disagree with me. Don't contradict me. Just stay there and be quiet. And so being quiet and playing it safe was what it literally made me safe. just like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything. So I don't even know if I knew how to tune into my intuition back then, but with uh, obviously with a lot of guys I dated, I'm like, oh, should should have paid attention to that a lot sooner. Long, yeah, exactly. Hook. Yeah, Hit the road, Jack. That was a good song. <laughs> long, but a lot of these guys, you know, we ignore the red flags because when yeah. you in a relationship, you're like, are you him? Are you him? Maybe you're him. I'm gonna hang in oh, yeah. there. I like the women that show up at the door when the guy comes to meet him on a first date in their wedding dress. Right? They're like, oh, this is Mr. Wonderful. I'm sure of it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. 
that's scary but yes <laughs> yes it's scary I mean you want that so bad so you a lot of times ignore what your gut when your gut's like no no or you'll dismiss things that where you're you're disrespected or you're treated badly or even abuse if there's abuse you right. think okay well or and a lot of times because I've learned a lot about narcissistic personality disorder because I have people like that in my family where they will love bomb you and people like us I'm assuming that most of your audience they're empaths they're sensitive they are intuitive if you get love bombed by somebody it feels great and you think oh my god they love me this is wonderful and then they turn around because they just want narcissistic supply from you and then they change and you go wait what happened and then they gaslight you and you keep waiting for that other person to come back you're like I know they're in there Right. I, and you give them a chance and another chance and another chance because you're the nice girl. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And that can be to your detriment. And that's why I think it's so important for women to learn to set boundaries because you can't really hear your intuition or tune into your intuition if you're so busy taking care of everybody else. If you genuinely like to do that, I mean, I like to take care of people. I like being nice. I like being nice. It's not, I'm not saying don't be nice, but you need to have boundaries and you need to be aware of yourself because if you're giving so much of yourself away, you can get depleted. And I like to say, you got to fill your own pitcher up or you can't keep pouring into everyone else's cup. But also you have to pay attention to the kind of relationships that you're in, because if you're with somebody who is being disrespectful, neglectful, abusive in some way, what, regardless of what level or whether it's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, emotional, it, you have to pay attention to that because that takes away from your ability to tune into yourself and hear that guidance and feel what's true for you and to honor it. Yeah, I think so many people are focused on the outside world, right? On on one hand, they miss the signs because they're focusing, let's say, on another person. They're missing and discounting their own feelings. Mm -hmm. And then they're second guessing their intuition because maybe they haven't had enough um, practice trusting or feel making a decision and it goes well. And they they were sure, sure, sure. And they made this choice and it bombed. Yeah. And then you just don't, then you totally lose faith in yourself. And it's, I've, it's something I've learned to do over the years. It's interesting. I've had psychics and astrologers for years going, you're so psychic. And I'm like, really? And now I'm really learning to trust it because when I follow it and when I share things with people, like, this is what I feel, they're like, oh my God, that's right. And it's really helped with my clients because I can tune into them and more confidently say, I'm feeling this for you, or I'm seeing this for you and trusting it. And if they're like, well, that's not quite right. I'm like, well, maybe let's explore the essence of that. Cause I, I know what, if I'm feeling it, I know it came from a higher source. And so it's gotta be true on some level. Right. And just finding and pinpointing the, the reference so that they can relate to it. And I've heard people say to me six months later, oh, you told me this. Now I understand what you're talking about. So it's just a perspective perhaps sometimes they don't quite relate to what's going on and sometimes we're too close to our own shadow or pattern as Moss had explained it yesterday is we're in that pattern so we can't see it so we have to do something different to break the pattern right so what what is it that you work with women in breaking that pattern well it depends on their individual situation okay. uh that's why I have to tune into them we'll hear their story because uh, I incorporate a lot of tapping in what I do. I love tapping. So I will talk to them and hear what's going on with them. And then I, the intuitive stuff helps me see what they can't. Like you were saying, we can't always see our own stuff. And I think that's why a lot of us go to psychics. Like, I don't know. I can't tell. Let me have someone else who has a higher perspective help me see what I can't see. So that's kind of what I do with my clients. And it, it depends on where where they're stuck and I may see them stuck someplace that they're not aware of and sometimes it's a welcome revelation like oh I never knew that and sometimes it's like mm. it's something they may not want to see it or admit it but let's work on it anyway and so I try to approach it from a, a gentle way to make it more palatable for them so it's yeah it's like I said it's an individual thing with each person yeah, I can appreciate that. Well, I just want to hit on one thing. You know, we said the word psychic and we've talked about it in a few other conversations earlier, but 
I think a lot of people get hung up on that and or, you know, like my own mother would never, she can you find another word? Like that doesn't, that's not really, it just, you know, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard for her. And so some people see it as a card reader. And I know there's a lot of people that like the tarot cards or finding out like what's ahead. What's coming for me? Where is my success? Where's Mr. Wonderful going to show up, you know, or the career? I need a job. So those are the top three, right? But the point of it is it's not outside you. And so there are leaders or healers or psychics that can guide you to your information or drop in a nugget, a reflection. But at the end of the day, it's on an inside job. So there's a lot of different levels. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of different levels of spiritual leaders and teachers and or psychics. Like we're not reading the future, we're creating our future by our vibration and our frequency and our awareness and our thoughts today. I don't know if that resonates with you, but I I, th I see the work you do is so much more than what we most people see as a psychic. Does that make any sense? Yeah, and I understand the trepidation with that word sometimes because, and even I hesitate- Not in a bad rap. Yeah. And because, yeah, it, it conjures images of someone who's a charlatan and just, woo -woo. Yeah, and to woo. I know um, Elaine said she didn't embrace her. Yeah. Woo. I embrace my woo. I think I've always been a little woo, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I have a friend. Me too. Me too. Yes. We're all woo. I have a friend who's an amazing psychic, but he likes to say intuitive. And I, I like the word intuitive, but uh, I actually have my great grandfather was actually psychic. And I remember my grandmother telling me about him years ago. He predicted the 1906 San, San Francisco earthquake. Wow. And I took a deep dive into him a few years ago and um, saw, found newspaper articles about him. So they called him a psychic and a prophet. And he was also right, a, a prophet. Yeah, but he was also a, a scholar too. So it was interesting because he he wasn't he wasn't woo, which is very interesting. Well, he was tapped into his intuitive guidance, the divine love, guidance, sacred, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's there's an alignment that happens to all of us, and that our natural abilities just turn on. It's it's part of us, it's part of our inner GPS. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah, I, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, I think we all have that ability and we just have to learn how to tune into it because it's there and it's either supported or encouraged or you just naturally follow it from a young age or like many of us, it's cultivated later and acknowledged. It's just like, oh yeah, I have this. And when you learn to follow it, it can serve you in so many ways. And And while you were talking, I just wanted to share one quick thing with one of my clients because I think this is really valid. Because there's so many women who are looking for love. They want to be with that right partner. And one of my clients years ago came to me after a bad breakup. So we spent a year working on her, just getting her back to herself. And when she was ready to start dating, she was a nice Jewish girl and she was looking for a nice Jewish boy. And she she joined J-Day and she let people set her up. But we were working on things from the law of attraction standpoint. I was having her focus on how she wanted to feel and finding just an actor that she found attractive. So she had something to kind of latch onto, like, this is kind of what I'm looking for. So she could get into the feeling that was the most important thing and focus on how she wanted to feel in this relationship. But this is what I did with my husband. I used law of attraction with him twice, consciously and then unconsciously, because we broke up and then we got back together. But she was focused on the feeling and her perfect man showed up and he was Korean. And she was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> a month. For to wrap her head around, it's not a nice Jewish boy. This is a Korean guy, but this is. <laughs> What's my mama going to say? <laughs> oh, yeah. So she, there was a part of her that initially she wasn't trusting, but then yeah. ultimately she realized, oh, and, and I always tell people that just let go of the package. Don't worry about what it looks like, because I think that makes people doubt their intuition as well sometimes too, because it may lead them to something, someone, some place where you think, this isn't what I planned. This isn't right. what I expected. This isn't what I thought it would look like, but it feels good. So just, you got to focus on the feeling because that's your intuition guiding and leading you to the perfect place, the perfect person, the perfect situation for you. I love that. Yeah. Was there a time that you made a decision that you were super happy that you trusted your intuition? 
Well, yes, my husband. And let me tell you real quick. So we were friends for years. We worked uh, in the art department together and that was a very tight group. We're still friends. And he was married when I first met him and my brain just doesn't let me get attracted to married men. So maybe right. that just took a while, but we'd been friends for about eight years and we had, we just exchanged, hi, how are you voicemails? And he didn't really say anything specific in this voicemail, but I was like, oh, I love him. And it was like the veil was lifted and I'm like, he's perfect for me. Why did I never see this before? And, but I didn't want to scare him off because I didn't want to ruin our friendship. So I spent two years going where he was, he's a producer and he was producing a band at the time. And I'd be at their shows like, hi. And he just wasn't getting it at all. And it was two years later when I was frustrated and our friend, our mutual friend, Tommy, asked me what was going on. I'm like, oh, I'm so frustrated, blah, blah, blah. And all our mutual friends knew about it and they were behind it, but they, you know, they couldn't do anything overtly either. And that's when he said, I'm going to send you the Abraham tape. So just focusing on that, then we were together two months later, but I, it's weird looking back because that was a hit of intuition and the divine going, hello, that- Are you listening? <laughs> yeah, I feel like there are so many times in my life when I probably could have followed direction like that, but I followed it so strong and I just went with it. And I'm like, okay, he's the right man for me. And, and we didn't want the same thing. So we did split up for a little bit, but then I started focusing on how I wanted to feel in a relationship and he came back and it, we're so amazingly happy. We're more in love every day. This is better than anything I ever thought I would have. And also following that intuition led me to a life that's way different because I wanted to get married young. I actually, I wanted to marry Life Garrett. I thought we were going to get married and have four kids. And, um, but I didn't get married till I was 42. I'm not having kids and I'm happy about that. I never thought this is what my life would be like, but I'm happier than I ever thought I would be because I followed that. And I, and I believe going back even farther, it, was my desire to work for Capitol Records. I wanted to work for a record company and I they're the ones that responded to my resume and it just, everything fell into place. And I was like, this is where I want to be. And years later, my husband was a result of that. And then, you know, him encouraging me to take this direction in my business, everything just kind of falls into place when you follow this bit of- Absolutely, yeah. It's this bit of intuition. You got to just keep following it and trusting it. Yeah, it's amazing, miraculously wonderful when we do that. I call it being in the flow and oftentimes having the courage to take a step when we're so congruent with something. Like I didn't know why I needed to create this summit. You know, people a year and a half ago told me I needed to speak. I remember Elaine and I having a conversation about a year and a half ago, like, okay, we're going to, I don't know, do a show or I'm going to have you on or and I forgot about it. I really forgot about it. And I kept feeling this nudge, like people need to know that they got to trust their intuition. Like it's the key thing in all of our decision-making and, and how, or we do attract abundance and success or not. And so I just kept following the breadcrumbs, right? And I'm so over the moon, excited to have you and all the speakers. I feel so humbled. But, but I'm trusting and who knows where it's going to go, right? What what the seeds were planting for other minds and for people to take their steps. I mean, I get overwhelmed thinking about how each intuitive step and action that we take, we have no idea the ripples that we're sending into the world. Yeah. And as a healer, I mean, I'm sure there's been times because I've been there that you haven't followed your intuition and you regretted it. What, can you tell me a story about what happened and what, how you felt? Oh, oh my God. Again, there's so many. I, <laughs> the, yeah. Again, there's yeah. this and I'm like, Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, but maybe you're him. But you know, I just, this just popped into my head that I left a job at one time to go work for something that I thought was going to be so great for me. It was a spiritual catalog company. And I got there and it was not what I thought it was going to be at all. And I felt so stuck. And, you know, I had that, that pit in my stomach, like, this is so wrong. I just, I got to get out of here. And it was so simple. It was just, it was just a job, but I had left another good job to take this which paid less. It was one of those, I'm going to take the leap of faith and follow my spirituality, but it wasn't for the right reasons. Yeah. It was your analyzer or your mind trying to tell you. 
yeah. that was maybe a better job? It, well, I thought it would lead me to a higher level of spirituality or, or allow me to move forward on that path. And it just wasn't. So I, I, I went into it with the best of intentions, but it just, it never felt right. And I wasn't there very long. And then it eventually led me back to um, yeah. capital. <laughs> well, it's not interesting because uh, I was reflecting on a number of clients that have done the same thing because we make the decision with our head. Mm -hmm. not our heart and we're out of congruency or out of alignment yeah and that feeling right yeah we're thinking oh. it would be better but it in an essence it proved not but the lesson was still valuable it's not like you were a loser and no. or that you you know are a failure and it just everything is a step on the path to where you're supposed to be if you just if you keep following it and trusting it and i i used to talk about this uh in my coaching where i call it continual course correction where it's like, oh, I went here. Oh, no, that's not right. Let me go back. Okay. And when you think about the fact that airplanes, they're off course 90% of the time. I was fascinated and a little terrified when I heard that. So airplanes are constantly practicing course correction. Like, oh, wait, no, we're all okay. And they get to their destination, but sometimes they veer a little bit, but they just have to keep coming back on course and keeping that end result or that destination in mind. Yeah, that's a great analogy. I love that. Now, I know that our time is short and I'm not Barbara and I don't have 60 minutes with you. <laughs> I only have 30 minutes. So I would, I know you brought, <clears throat> pardon me, a gift to share with our audience, all the listeners that are sitting at the at edge of their seat wondering what this one is. Would you mind sharing that with us? Not at all. Yeah, it's uh, the self-care boundary quiz. It's on my website, tannamarshall.com. I created this to help women see where they are as far as how much of their sel themselves they're giving away. How much are you doing for everybody else that's detrimental to you? And how much are you giving to yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you prioritizing self-care? So I have this very simple quiz. I think it's really enlightening. And then depending on your responses, you get a customized tapping session. Because like I said, I love tapping. I do it all the time. So if you've got this and you're taking care of yourself and you're feeling confident, there's a tapping session to reinforce that. If you're kind of in the middle, you could, you're kind of confident, but you're still a people pleaser, then there's one that's to kind of reinforce more of the the self-care stuff. If you are totally giving yourself away, suffering from the disease to please and kind of lost and trying to please everybody else all the time, there's a tapping session to support you to help increase your confidence, bring that energy back to yourself and make you know that it's okay for you to prioritize yourself over other people because that's the main thing, in my opinion. I have to put this in the chat. Disease to please. That is dynamite. Oh my God, that is so great. Thank you for that. Um, I um, am thrilled that you're sharing that because so many people, I'm, you know, even if you're confident today, come on, tomorrow throws you a curveball and you're going to second guess yourself. Or even like myself, after all these years, I sometimes feel like, holy shit, I'm, uh, uh, who am I kidding? You know, we all have these moments of, having to regroup and step back up into a newer version, a higher level of our confidence. And so it's an ongoing cycle, isn't it? Yeah. But like I said, it makes you human and people can relate to you more. Cause I know that when the people that I follow and look up to, when they admit, or I see them struggling a little bit and they share that and they're open about it, I respect them and love them even more because I'm learning from what they're going through. So everybody's learning from what you are going through and you are amazing, Amira. And I thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. I would have never believed in a million years that I'd be doing something like this. And it's because I put one step in front, one foot in front of the other. And so thank you. It it humbles me so much. I'm so honored to be with you. Uh, thanks for joining us today and uh, sharing your wisdom, your gifts, your experiences. It's rich. Oh, thank, thank you. you thank Anna. you for having me. And thank you for sharing yourself and all these women. We all appreciate yeah. you so much. And everybody go to the chat and click that link and get Tana's wonderful gift. Go ahead and serve yourself, receive that abundance. Yeah, thank you, Tana.